Greetings everyone, and here we go with a specialist macro lens at a very low price, the Pergia 60mm f2.8 macro 2 to 1. It's designed for crop sensor APS-C cameras, here's what the image circle looks like on full frame, however when shooting macro it does fully cover a full frame sensor. The lens I'm testing here is a re-release of their 60mm lens from 2021. Pergia says that it has improved work against bright light and slightly better coverage for macro work if you're using a full frame camera. This lens has the distinguished ability of being able to focus twice as closely as other macro lenses without the need of extension tubes, a double macro lens if you will. I'd like to thank Pergear for sending me along a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual this will be a totally independent review. And a few extra details about the lens like its price and mount availability will be in the description below. The maximum aperture of f2.8 is pretty standard, it lets in a good amount of light and means you can get somewhat out of focus backgrounds in your normal pictures, but normally in macro photography you stop down a bit to f5.6 or f8 for the extra depth of field. And being able to get twice as close as a normal macro lens is actually really fun. Macro photography is well known for being pretty enjoyable and getting this close to your subject for a 2 to 1 image is even more fascinating. You're going to want to use a good tripod with this or any other macro lens unless you're shooting outside on a bright day. Let's take a look at the build quality. The lens itself is slightly corpulent and its body is made completely of metal, well except for the glass optics of course. Even the grip around the focus ring is a part of the metal body. Makes a nice change, the lens feels manufactured to a high standard. This is a completely manual lens, manual focus, manual aperture. The focus ring turns quite smoothly and precisely, as does the aperture ring. I do wish the focus ring worked a bit more precisely when focusing at normal distances though, I found macro work to be easy to focus but portrait pictures were a bit tricky. As usual for almost every macro lens I've ever tested, the lens displays a lot of focus breathing as you can see here and this can make things tricky if you're trying to do focus tacking. The lens has a 62mm filter thread and doesn't seem to be particularly weather sealed and it doesn't come with a hood, but overall its build quality is fine, so long as you're happy with focusing manually of course. Ok, let's look at its image quality at normal distances, I'm testing it on a Sony A5100 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. At f2.8 the lens is very sharp in the middle with very good contrast, although a touch of colour fringing is visible. Still, this is a much better performance than Pergear's original 60mm lens from 2021. Corner image quality at f2.8 is pretty weak though, however stop down to f4 and it looks much better and back in the middle of the image, contrast is now even punchier and virtually all of that colour fringing is gone. F5.6 is the same in the middle and the corner image quality is a bit sharper again, the lens stays this sharp down to f11, f16 as usual gets a bit softer due to the effects of diffraction. So while its central sharpness is very impressive, you still need to stop down a fair bit to get the same quality in your image corners. This is an ultra macro lens, so let's see about close up image quality now. At f2.8, close up image quality is a touch soft. However, stop down to f4 for a nice increase in sharpness and contrast. f5.6 looks about the same, but stop down to f8 and a little softness emerges as diffraction begins to kick in already. It's always more of a problem at close distances. Here's f11, stop down anymore and the image just gets too soft. So for best results, shoot close up between f4 and f5.6. Now let's see about vignetting and distortion. The bad news is that pincushion distortion is pretty noticeable here, but the good news is that even at f2.8, vignetting isn't very noticeable, stop down to f5.6 and whatever was there is gone. Now let's see how the lens performs against bright light, when shooting at f2.8 this lens displays a fair bit of flaring, but it is admittedly a bit less than on the original version of the lens, stop down to f4 and it mostly clears up. Now let's wrap things up by taking a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. 
we have a good result here. The out of focus backgrounds this lens can produce are nice and soft in virtually all situations, particularly when they're deeply out of focus. And related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f2.8, there's virtually none to be seen, although a bit of the lateral colour fringing that we saw at normal distances is noticeable here too. Even if you stop down to f5.6, it sticks around a little. Overall, well, the biggest difference of this new version of the 60mm lens is its much better image quality at f2.8, better full frame coverage, and very slightly improved work against bright lights. It's still a lens with obvious optical limitations, but it's still not bad and it can be quite fun to play around with shooting at such close distances, and for its low price, it's good value. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found that review helpful, and thanks to my Patreon supporters who help so much to keep these tests going. Check it out in the description below, as Patreon supporters get all kinds of extra bonus content. Ciao for now everyone!